Okay, so in the class on Thursday, we had used the Grunewald inequality, and I proved it only in one direction, and asked you to prove it in the other direction at home. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the proof in the other direction. Before I do that, let me just remind you why we cared at all. And this had to do with the need to continue solutions. So we want to be able to continue solutions. And the key idea in continuing solutions was that if you had two solutions of the same differential system and they agreed at a point, then you could create an ex and if their domains were uh, not nested, then you could actually create a solution over a larger interval. So we had the ODE, x prime is f of x, and we had f is locally Lipschitz on an open set contained in Rn. f goes from the open set to Rn. And we had one solution, x1, on an open interval i1. And we had a second solution, x2, on an open interval i2. And the intervals had non-empty intersection. And there exists some point in the intersection where the two solutions agree. This then implied that the solutions agreed on the whole open set. And that allowed us to define x of t, which is x1 of t if t is in the first open interval, x2 of t if t is in the second open interval, is well defined and is a solution. And so and that would be a solution on I1 union I2. So how did we get that they agree on the intersection of the two open intervals? So what we did was we would take a closed interval, so choose a closed interval in I1 intersect I2 that also contains the point T0. We argue, we prove that x1 equals x2 on that closed interval. And then because any point t tilde in the intersection can be located in a closed interval of the above type, we'd conclude that x1 at t tilde equals x2 at t tilde, which then tells us that x1 equals x2 on the intersection of the open sets. So all we need to do is show that 
x1 equals x2 on j, which is of the form, let's just give it a name, I don't know, cd, where t0 is in cd, and cd is contained in i1 intersect i2. All right, so let's take some point in that closed interval cd. We know that x1 at t is equal to x1 at t0 plus the integral from t0 to t of f of x1 of s. Well, actually, let's be a little bit slower. Of x1 prime at s ds. And that's just the fundamental theorem of calculus. This also equals x1 at t0 plus the integral from t0 to t of f of x1 of s ds. And that's because x1 prime is equal to f at x1. It's a solution. And then similarly, x2 of t is equal to x2 at t0 plus the integral from t0 to t of the vector field integrated along the solution x2 of s. Now, because the points are in common, x1 of t0, the solutions agree at t0, when we subtract, we get that x1 at t minus x2 at t is simply equal to the integral from t0 to t of the vector field evaluated at x1 minus the vector field evaluated at x2 ds. So taking the absolute value, we have x1 of t minus x2 of t is less than or equal to the integral from the minimum of t of t naught and t to the maximum of t naught and t. The abs the magnitude of f of x one of s minus f of x two of s ds. And now we use that f is locally Lipschitz. And we had found that we had defined a compact set, which was the which was x1, the image of x1 on the closed interval CD, union the image of x2 on the closed interval CD. This is compact. And so F has a Lipschitz constant. on this compact set, because f is locally Lipschitz, and so that tells us specifically that the magnitude of x1 of s minus fx2 of s is less than or equal to some to that constant, that finite constant, times the magnitude of x1 of s minus x2 of s. And we can use that above. Okay, so we have that x1 t minus x2 of t is less than or equal to k, the integral from the minimum of t0 and t to the maximum of t0 and t, x1 of s minus x2 of s ds. So it's at this point we use the Grunewald. And uh, the Grunewald inequality comes in many types, but the one that we used was if there exists a closed interval CD and 
for all t in that closed interval, we have that 0 is less than or equal to u of t is less than or equal to c plus k, the integral from the min of t naught t to the max of t naught t times u of s ds, then u of t is less than or equal to c e to the k magnitude of t minus t naught for all t in the closed interval. And so specifically, that's what we used. So that's the Grunewald equality. And what we used was that if c equals 0, then u is identically 0 on the closed interval cd. And that c, when I say c is 0, I mean the capital C. So let's do the proof of the Grunewald equality. The, uh, so in class, I proved it for t greater than, well not greater than, basically in class I proved that for t to the right of t naught we have u of t is less than or equal to c e to the kt minus t naught as desired. Now let's do the other side. So now let's consider t that are less than t naught. So those would be t between the point little c and t naught. So we introduce a helper. So we have that 0 is less than or equal to u of t is less than or equal to big C plus k, the integral from t to t naught of u of s ds, which I rewrite as k times c over k plus the integral from t to t naught u of s ds. Now, all we know is that little u is continuous on the closed interval. I didn't say that in the statement, but I should have. So little u is not differentiable. So I have this integral inequality and if I had a differential inequality I would know what to do. So I introduce a helper function, a differentiable helper function. So my differentiable helper function is going to be u of t, which is c over k plus the integral from t to t naught of u of s ds, and by the integral inequality, and the fact that the Lipschitz constant is positive, I know that little u of t is less than or equal to k times big u of t. And by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I know that u prime of t is equal to minus u of t.
and so that tells me that u prime of t is greater than or equal to minus the Lipschitz constant times u of t. Okay, so what do we have here? We have u prime of t plus k u of t is greater than or equal to zero. So now this is something that I can integrate. This is like an integrating factor problem, so I'm going to in multiply by e to the k t minus t naught. And I have e to the k t minus t naught u prime of t plus k e to the k t minus t naught times u of t is greater than or equal to zero. And the left hand side is an exact derivative. I have e to the k t minus t naught times capital U of t prime is greater than or equal to zero. So what this tells me that the function e to the k t minus t naught u of t is a non-decreasing function on the interval I care about, which was from little c to t naught. And so specifically, for all t in little c to t naught, I know that e to the k t minus t naught times u of t is less than or equal to the value at the right end point. So that would be e to the k t naught minus t naught u at time t naught. And that is precisely c over k. So we're almost done. We've got u of t is less than or equal to c over k. e to the k t minus t naught Sorry, I lost my minus sign when I multiplied across. And so that is C over K E to the K T naught minus T. And now because, uh, and so this tells us that little u of t is less than or equal to c e to the k t naught minus t, which is c e to the k absolute value of t minus t naught. And this is true for all t in the interval to the left, c to t naught, and then for t to the right, We did this in the class.